Lun Thai is a family business. Yeah. And uh, the the biggest portion of uh, of the business is really our manufacturing business. Mm. And uh, in the recent year, we also start to go into uh, retail uh, in China and mm -hmm. some real estate. And the company is also a large uh, fishing business uh, in, in the Pacific. Mm -hmm. We also have uh, a lot of different business in Guam and uh, Saipan and Micronesian Islands. Mm -hmm. uh, the manufacturing business is really the biggest portion of, of the family business. And uh, that portion of the business is listed in Hong Kong, mm. and uh, and the the home manufacturing business uh, we employ around uh, maybe about forty five thousand employee globally, mm. and has about one point two billion US dollars of turnover every year. Yeah, every year. Mm, that's very impressive. Uh, can you tell me more about the manufacturing business, like? Where is our uh, main production base and where is our main markets? Uh, the business is uh, basically we, we are selling garment and we're selling uh, bags. bags. Uh, mm -hmm. About, uh, and in the old days, uh, the big portion of the manufacturing is, is in China. Mm -hmm. uh, with the recent cost increase in China, uh, we have continued to diversify them in Southeast Asia. Uh, in Southeast Asia, we operate in Philippines, mm. in Vietnam, Cambodia, mm. and Indonesia. Mm. And we also have operation in India and, and Bangladesh. Mm. Uh, but the bulk of them is really uh, in, in the ASEAN country and China. Uh, in the recent years, uh, we also expand into bags manufacturing, mm. uh, both luxury bags uh, such as Coach, Michael Kors, mm. uh, and we also manufacture a lot of computer bags, mm. backpacks, computer bags, camera bags. And we're selling those um, garments and bags to China and Europe? Europe? Yeah, I think we are, I think United States account for uh, slightly under uh, 50%. Mm. And about thirty percent of our business is in Europe, mm. and about twenty percent of them is in in Asia. Mm. And Asia is really mainly China and Japan. Mm. China and Japan. Uh, can you tell us more about um, how the manufacturing business changed during the past like two decades? Do you see a major trend in the industry? Major well, I mean. Uh, Back in the in the old days, you know, in yeah. the year two thousand, mm -hmm. China uh, was the um, factory of the world, and those yeah. are the days. Mm -hmm. uh, I think with the uh, continuous uh, improvement in uh, Chinese economy, the wages and costs has gone up uh, tremendously, along with the uh, appreciation of the renminbi in the old days. Uh, we have started to move some of the production overseas. Uh, How many production bases we used to have on Chinese mainland? In the old days, I think we have 70, 80 percent. I think now, I think we are uh, maybe 60 some percent uh, overseas now. Maybe 40 percent still in China. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I do expect our overseas production to continue to increase. In the recent years, uh, the changes uh, is not only just cost. Yeah. Uh, you must have heard about uh, TPP, uh, mm -hmm. Trans-Pacific Partnership. Uh, that was just recently agreed by the 12 nations. Mm -hmm. uh, it is our belief that uh, products will be, uh, will be moved to where uh, it is duty-free. Uh -huh. uh, the failure of the Doha round of negotiation, mm -hmm. that's supposed to govern the world trade, uh, has not been successful mm. and therefore there is a lot of uh, regional, uh, bilateral or multilateral free trade agreement that is created. Mm. And duty rate for garment and bags mm. run between maybe 10 to 30 percent. Mm. And in our business, the margin is not so high. Mm. And therefore, uh, I believe that the production will continue to shift 
to where it is duty free. Like which? which? Uh, the TPP, mm -hmm. uh, I think Vietnam would be the biggest beneficiary. Mm -hmm. So uh, when TPP get uh, passed, uh, maybe some people are say 2018, or some people say maybe by 2020, uh, I think uh, a lot of production probably will move to uh, Vietnam when garment is duty free. And I understand that uh, Philippines, Indonesia mm. has also expressed interest to be part of TPP. Mm -mm. So I believe that government production will move to uh, TPP countries. Mm. What would be remain in China uh, would probably be uh, China for China. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and also uh, maybe uh, some of the very complicated uh, product. China does have a very complete supply chain from mm. yarn yeah. to, to, I mean, to fabric to all the trims and, uh, and all the development. Mm. So we believe that China will continue to have some portion of the business, mm. but the bulk portion probably will move to TPP country. What is our plan? Do we have already have production base in TPP countries? We have some production in, mm. uh, in Vietnam. Mm. Uh, we have a large production in Philippines uh, mm. and it depending on how it is going to shift and whether Philippines and, and Vietnam and Indonesia will be part of TPP or not. Uh, we do continue to expand those. Mm. Uh, in the bags manufacturing, mm. uh, United States has passed the GSP update bill mm. uh, such that uh, bags will be duty free in uh, Philippines, Cambodia, Indonesia. Mm. And we are currently expanding quickly uh, in our bags manufacturing, uh, we probably increase employment in Philippines from about four or five thousand to over ten thousand in the next uh, next next twelve to eighteen months. Mm -hmm. uh, and we are also uh, expanding quickly in Cambodia, uh, making computer bags and backpacks. Mm -hmm. The luxury bags will be made in the Philippines, mm -hmm. and I believe the the duty rate would. Mm -hmm. Uh, or the duty preference will continue to distort uh, the country of manufacturing mm. in the years to come. Mm. Uh, I want to know um, your bags manufacturing business is it in the listed arm in Hong Kong? Yes, in the listed arm. Mm -hmm. uh, we are making uh, ladies' uh, bags for customers like Coach, Michael Kors, mm -hmm. K Spade, those yeah. are large US brands and uh, we believe that business will continue to expand quickly. Mm -hmm. um, would you please tell us more about your um, like retail and real estate business? I, I understand this, Skechers China, is this a joint venture? or? Uh, Skechers, uh, we entered into a joint venture agreement with uh, Skechers USA mm. that we will uh, expand together in, uh, in China and Southeast Asia. Mm. And uh, this business is growing very, very fast. Uh, mm. Right now, I think we have maybe uh, 1,600 uh, mm. to 1,800 stores, mm. and we expect the number of store count probably grow uh, at the rate of 20% a year. Mm. Uh, and the company, uh, right now we are mostly in the first and second tier city in China, mm. and in, in addition to the expansion of the first and second tier city, we also uh, intend to bring the product to the third and fourth tier city. Mm. Uh, E-commerce is also an important part of our, uh, uh, of our growth. In, uh, in the November 11 that just passed, mm. uh, we did very well. And in fact, the ladies' uh, schedule business, ladies' shoes, mm. is number one in Timor. Oh. So uh, we believe that uh, this business will have a lot of uh, growth. Mm -hmm. uh, on top of the shoes business, mm. we are also expanding them into the garment business. Mm. You know, we are a garment manufacturing company. Yeah. So those garments that you see over there uh, will form uh, an important growth factor for, for the business going forward. Mm -hmm. um, I'm wondering about this um, schedule joint venture. Uh, we hold like 50% of the stake. Yeah, I mean, we different country will hold different shares. In China. In China, we have fifty percent shares in uh, in, in the, the business, and, and mm -hmm. the we have a very very close relationship with uh, with our partner. Mm. 
we support them with the, uh, our knowledge about China mm. uh, in the distribution system. Mm. And they, they are able to come up with fantastic uh, product development. So I think we are able to leverage uh, the strength of both partners mm. and, uh, and has been extremely, extremely well. Uh, you mentioned before the 1,600 to 1,800 um, sales points. How many of them are on mainland China? Uh, majority of them are in mainland China. Mm -hmm. I think we have maybe 100 in Hong Kong, and we are in Singapore, mm. Malaysia, Thailand, mm. Cambodia, Vietnam. Mm -hmm. So uh, we, but the majority uh, of the stores are in China, mm. and the biggest growth uh, is also in China. Mm. Mm. So the store is uh, opening, uh, the, the growth of the store is, is growing like 20% every year. How about the sales growth? It's also double in fact, uh, yeah, double digit. Double in digit. fact, our, this year, mm -hmm. uh, our uh, comparable sales growth per store is also, uh, also in double digits. Okay. Um, the retail business is not in the listed arm, is it? The retail business, uh, the schedule business is not in the retail arm. Uh, our, in, the, in the list of vehicle, mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, signed an agreement uh, with uh, Ralph Lauren uh, to distribute chops uh, this year. Mm -hmm. The first store is uh, as open in October. Mm -hmm. So uh, we do also plan to expand the chops business uh, in China. And oh, Southeast that's Asia. A new brand it's a new brand, C H A P S, Chaps. This is our own brand. No, we license it from license. A, a U.S. company. Mm. Uh, but comparing to our manufacturing business, the retail business is very small. Is that correct? Uh, it's growing very fast, growing especially the uh, the sketcher business. And, uh, and the company also intended to, uh, to continue to look for opportunity uh, in, in the retail business. Mm -hmm. uh, as you probably know, I mean, uh, they are saying that uh, middle class in China uh, is about 100 million. Yeah. And some people are saying in the next few years, it probably grow to uh, 300 million. Mm -hmm. So uh, the, with the growth of the middle class in China, and that is where we think uh, our uh, retail uh, of the Chinese consumer market will be focusing on, on, on the middle class in China. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, our product, I mean the uh, Skechers, um, if we're talking about shoes, how, uh, what is the retail price range? It's like I think five, six hundred dollars, I mean renminbi. Renminbi, okay. So it's affordable. Yeah, we like to be in the affordable luxury area. Mm -hmm. I think the shoes itself is very, very comfortable. Yeah, yeah. And that is, uh, it's very light, it's very comfortable. It's nice. And, uh, and the designs are right. So, uh, so it's uh, gaining a lot of popularities. And the clothes? The clothes, we are also thinking of developing it along the same concept. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, uh, uh, last Sunday, you know, I was invited to a dinner. And one of uh, the guests said that he has bought several hundred shoes just to give away to his friends. Because he said it's, it's so, yeah, he said it's so nice. It's the best gift for him to give away. And uh, so I think, I think the, the comfort of the shoes, I think is, the, uh, is one of the driving factor. Mm -hmm. uh, this joint venture company in Hong Kong, we hold how much stake, uh, 50%? We, I don't have the exact number, oh, but- uh, Around? Uh, about, about 30, 40%. We do have a local partner in Hong Kong uh, that is helping us to distribute them in Hong Kong. Mm. And, uh, in China, we also have something, someone distribute them for us? Or in, some, in, in, in China, uh, the German operate, uh, we operate, the we operate our own store. Own uh, we also uh, have a franchisee Franchise. that is uh, uh, supporting us. Mm. And uh, the, the last leg is the e-commerce, which is growing quickly. So this e-commerce will come for like 10 percent, 20 percent of our. I think it's 20 some percent now, and then we were trying to grow the e-commerce business. Great. Um, 
I also want to know, like, um, due to the uh, the slower growth of Chinese economy, um, is that affect our business? I mean, both um, the manufacturing business and retail. Uh, our manufacturing business, mm -hmm. the bulk of the market is really in uh, in uh, overseas. overseas. So. so we are more uh, dependent on the economic conditions overseas, overseas. Uh, and and. And the, in the U.S. and the European business or the Japanese economy are not exactly mm -hmm. that good. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and I think the e-commerce, whether it's in China or in, uh, or in the West, uh, are gaining popularities. Mm -hmm. And I think that will be changing mm -hmm. the dynamic of the whole retail business all over the world. And, and it will be affecting manufacturing. Uh, and how how we sell and what we sell mm -hmm. uh, in the in the years to come. Mm -hmm. uh, our retail business in China is actually growing very well. Uh, mm -hmm. Although the Chinese economy uh, mm -hmm. may have slowed down, uh, but uh, the Chinese economy is still growing, mm -hmm. and the middle class is actually it's growing very very mm -hmm. fast. And that is the market segment that we are going after. It is our belief that if we are able to have a very good uh, foreign brand, they can do joint venture with us and with our distribution network, I think we can grow that market segment quite well. Mm. Uh, and and Sketcher is a very, very good example. Mm. Um, you mentioned e-commerce several times. I want to know, uh, like from a group point of view, the e-commerce currently come for how much of the revenue? 5%, 10%? Uh, it's still not big yet, uh, mm -hmm. maybe under 10%. Mm. Uh, but uh, we believe, I challenge all my executives, I say e-commerce would, uh, would be the future of, uh, of our economy. Mm. And we are entering into a new economy. Mm. And uh, we don't want to get eliminated because uh, of uh, of the changes of behavior, mm. everybody's life. Mm. In the old days, I mean, when I was young, you no, know, we don't have a, having a telephone is, is a luxury at home. Mm -hmm. But right now, I mean, everybody has a has a mobile phone, and uh, and uh, everybody can do their purchase, do their banking, book mm -hmm. their hotels, everything on on their mobile device. Mm -hmm. So uh, it is important that uh, in every one of our business we have to examine what are the challenges and opportunity in e-commerce. Mm. Uh, that will be changing mm. businesses and, uh, and people's life. Do you have a target or you have anything in mind, like in a few years from now, you want uh, the e-commerce to contribute to how much of the companies, the groups? Revenue? We are fundamentally, I mean, manufacturing mm. uh, and uh, we believe that that is an important part of our business. Mm. And how would that evolve? I think it's still, uh, still changing. Yeah. So uh, it's very hard to say. I mean, uh, my, mm -hmm. some of my executives were saying that, you know, I tell you just now, we are in the tuna fish business. Mm -hmm. He said, you know, maybe you know, uh, we can sell those fish directly to everybody's household. Where, where are you uh, do the fishing? Maybe? We're catching them in the Pacific. Pacific. I mean, in the U.S., we are shipping it to 2,000 restaurants directly. Uh -huh. But um, my, my, my executive were telling me, you know, maybe one day uh, we can ship it directly to, to households. Uh, I was told that you can buy ice cream over e-commerce. Oh. If you can buy ice cream over e-commerce, there must be a way that we can sell fresh fish over e-commerce also. Mm. Uh, and we also operate tour and hotel. And I think that portion of the business, uh, there are more and more people uh, not going through the traditional uh, way of uh, going through a travel agency. Uh, and that portion of the business will also probably continue to grow. More and more people are just buying your ticket over internet, booking your room over internet. Mm. And so those are the business that we believe that will grow, will grow very, very fast. So, um, you mentioned we are fundamentally manufacturer, but we are like so diverse. We have tuna fishing business, real estate, and we're running hotels. 
why uh, why are we doing this? It's like we are uh, intentionally diversify our business, or because this is a family business. So mm -hmm. different. Uh, some of my brother that is living in Guam and Saipan, they are in charge of the business there. Uh -huh. Some of them live in China, they are in charge of business there. Mm -hmm. And so we do have uh, the family does have a, a different portfolio of business that we are operating in. Uh, about our real estate business is like uh, we're in China, in Hong Kong, we buy buildings. Well, uh, in uh, in China, uh, we we are a large government company. Uh -huh. So, uh, like in the city of Qingyuan, uh, in the early days, I thought uh, uh, I would be shutting down all the overseas factory and move everything back to Qingyuan. So we bought a million square meter of land. Uh, I was hoping that I would have half a million employee in one site, but unfortunately, that is not that is not happening. So we convert some of those industrial lands into uh, real estate development, and that is also doing quite well. And, uh, and some of our factories uh, in, in Dongguan, we are also looking at the possibility of uh, making as an uh, innovation center uh, that uh, we may be able to attract young talents to, uh, to, to operate there. So different ideas depending on the location of some of those land. Mm. So currently our um, factories on the mainland is it still uh, in Guangdong province? Or? We have them in Guangdong, uh -huh. uh, and uh, majority is in Guangdong. Majority. We also have a factory in Dandong. Oh, Dandong, that's quite north, right? Yeah, in the Aoling province. Yeah, one factory <coughs> in Dandong. Yeah. We moved it or we just started? We it? operate in Dandong, no. Mm -hmm. I was thinking that one day North Korea will open up. Unfortunately, <laughs> it's never happened yet. That's, yeah, that's, that's great. Um, so, uh, as a family business, when you started to work for the company? Well, I started to work in the family business uh, since 19 years old when I started to go to college. Uh -huh. And uh, so has been in the family business since then. Mm. Uh, where did you go to college? Uh, I went to Guam. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, uh, and in Japan? No, Guam is part of America. Oh, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, and after graduate, you just returned to Hong Kong? To yeah, I, I stayed there for a few years and then I come back to Hong Kong and my brothers continue to stay there. And that's why, you know, we do have a, a significant business uh, in, uh, US. In, uh, in Guam, Saipan and the rest of Micronesian Islands. Mm -hmm. Great. So... What's it like to work for a family business when you start? Uh, I, I think it's good. Uh, working in a family business, I think uh, it's good. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and of course, it has, it has its challenges also. Mm. Uh, we, you know, uh, my brothers and sister, uh, we work together. Mm. And, uh, and we believe that, uh, you know, we have done some... Uh, uh, brainstorming mm. and we believe that it is better for us to work together and, uh, and Chinese has a saying that you know a pair of chopsticks you can break them easily That's and when you have a bunch of chopsticks you know yeah, you it, it holds up holds much up better so I think that mm -hmm. is true so when you were uh, 19 what was it like to work for the family it's like uh, when was it like the family just found it just started Oh, I, 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 I went to Guam because the family was running a shipping business uh -huh. and the ship go to Guam. Ah. And, uh, and, and then after the ship no longer go to Guam, uh, in fact, we were in the... In the uh, so firstly, the company was a shipping. It was focusing on shipping. Yeah, we were a shipping mm. company, you know, in 1965. Mm. Uh, and when the ship goes to Guam, I mean, I... I, my father asked me to move to Guam, so I moved to Guam, mm. and uh, but uh, and then we start to diversify into different business uh, mm. and continue to grow. Mm. And today we are in many different business. We are in insurance. We are in in entertainment. We are in uh, in oil. We are in publication. We are in freight forwarding. We are doing fishing. We have hotels. Yeah. Yeah. 
uh, it's a very diversified group uh, in, in, in the region. What do you think is the core value of the company? What is the core value of your family? Uh, my father always say that uh, in Chinese, 诚信勤奋. And, and basically, I think you, know, you have to be honest and trustworthy mm. in, 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 in your business undertaking. And I think that has helped me a lot uh, in my career, in my life. And uh, if you're honest, people trust you. I think you take you a long, long way. And also, you've got to be hardworking. You know, I mean, uh, things just doesn't happen naturally. Mm. You have to be hardworking uh, to achieve what you need. And I think those are the core family values that, uh, that we have. Uh, and all family members observe that. So it's just 诚信勤奋, also your business philosophy, you will run the company this way? Yeah, you know, I, I encourage our executives and, mm. and all our employees uh, to, to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to know, as a business leader, how you keep your uh, employees motivated, how you keep your executives motivated? I think most important is uh, you need to have a good incentive system uh, in your executives uh, on, on all levels of, uh, of, your em of, of the mm. employment, yeah. uh, we, we need to make them feel like that this is their own business. Mm. So you need to set up an incentive scheme uh, that incentivize them that, uh, that they, they will work towards a similar goal. Mm. And, uh, and that is what we are tr trying to work on. Mm -hmm. As a leader, what is your vision, what is your plan for the company in the future, like in the next five or ten years? Do you see, want to see it grow in which part? Uh, I think different part of our business uh, are growing. Mm -hmm. uh, the portion that I see uh, a very significant growth mm -hmm. would probably be in the Chinese consumer market, mm -hmm. uh, whether uh, it is uh, our retail Mm. Or, or the tourism business that we have uh, out of uh, China to, to some of our island uh, destinations. And of course, manufacturing business is the biggest portion of uh, the group. Uh, being operating in some of the duty-free country, mm. uh, especially like in our back business, I also see a significant uh, growth in, uh, in, in our bags manufacturing in the years to come. Um, is any of your children working for the family right now? Yeah, some of my kids are working in, 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 in the business. Mm -hmm. and, uh, in Hong Kong or overseas? Uh, they are in Hong Kong and one is about to move to Shanghai. Oh. And uh, the, the one that is going to do the retail business and he believed that uh, Shanghai is really the center of the Chinese retail. Mm -hmm. So he will be moving to Shanghai uh, after Chinese yeah. New Year. Great. So what would you tell them, like, you also will require them to be Chenxing and hardworking? Yeah, of course. And they are. I believe they are. Mm -hmm. They are all good kids. And I'm really proud of them. Really great to know. And also, it's, uh, the next question is also about the, uh, the younger generation. Um, so when the company is recruiting, like recruiting the youngsters, what kind of people are we looking for? Like, or what kind of characters are we looking for in those young people? And first of all, they get to fit the job and they mm. get to enjoy what they are doing. Mm -hmm. And uh, hardworking. And you got to be hardworking. Mm. And uh, I think like all business, you have, to, you have to recruit the people that fit for the job. Mm. and give them the proper incentive scheme. Mm. So whether it is family member or outside member, I think they, they are the same. I mean, I think uh, you just have to make the system correct so that they will, uh, they will fight for it. Mm -hmm. um, so after doing the business I mean, in Hong Kong for so many years, do you think Hong Kong is still a good place for young people to start a business? Of course, I mean, uh, Hong Kong, uh, especially recently, has been very, very challenging. Yeah. Uh, however, I think uh, we are really entering into a new economy. Mm. 
uh, with the changes in, uh, in internet, uh, I'm telling you that I'm challenging all my executives uh, that uh, they could examine how our business is being positively or negatively impacted by, uh, uh, by the uh, new economy, uh, i.e. the e-commerce. I think it is really changing everybody's life. Uh, and I think it's also creating transparency over information. Mm -hmm. And, and if, I, you, if you are able to come up with a good idea, mm. uh, they change a lot of things. Mm. I mean, whether Uber is going to be legal or not is one thing. But it is true that, I mean, you're using unused resources, mm -hmm. whether it's a car or a driver, uh, to, to facilitate the transportation. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, you know, I mean, uh, whether it is uh, this uh, internet e-commerce, mm -hmm. instead of buying the shoes or the garment in a department store or in a store, mm -hmm. then you pay a lot of rental and you pay a lot of uh, staff to, to manage them. Mm -hmm. uh, if the consumer can buy directly from warehouse or from the manufacturer or from the brand, mm -hmm. uh, it eliminate all the overhead. Mm -hmm. The only thing that is added is instead of shipping 10,000 pairs of shoes, we are shipping one or two pairs. Mm. But uh, the overhead that is eliminated uh, far exceed the cost of transportation. Mm. Uh, and therefore, uh, I think this is creating a lot of uh, uh, space for young people that want to think out of the box. Mm. If you are able to figure a way that you are able to use uh, unused resources and be able to group them together. Mm. You know, it's big business. And that is what uh, internet is all about. I mean, creating transparency mm. uh, over information. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. So my final question is, uh, for those young people who want to start a business, like, you know, thanks to the internet, uh, what's your suggestion to them? You know, uh, this is what I believe, I know. You know, in, in your life, there is a lot of opportunities uh, that will go in front of you. Whether you are able to capture mm. that opportunity when it comes go through you, mm. when it pass by you, is very important. Mm. And it will change your life, you know, if you are able to capture one or two important opportunities as it moves on. Mm. 